good afternoon, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see the slide. Everything good? Welcome. So I'm going to lecture here tonight. Really, I'm going to lecture about how to become a professional day trader, if that is something that you've been thinking about doing or want to do. A lot of people attempt to trade the market and fail. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of the reasons that they fail is because they don't have a strict focus. So I focus specifically on a strategy that I myself created. It's based on stock scalping. And that is what I'm going to talk about here tonight. If you have any questions, you can write it in the room and I will go through and answer the questions as we go along. So we're going to be talking about how you can earn 20 grand a month day trading or even more. But we're going to talk about that specifically because most people, if they made a little over 200 grand a year, could uh, you know, earn a living doing this. Now, not everyone, but most people. And I think one of the biggest challenges, as I said, for people is the fact that they lack the consistency in what they're doing in the market. I'm extremely consistent in what I'm doing because I'm looking for the same thing every day. And in the day trading room, which we're going to talk about here today, we will talk about one option trade, but in the day trading room, I'm focused mostly to the short side. Okay. And, and people that ask me why, because I really, really like the idea of getting in and out of trades fast and drop offs or selling action or when, it, when a stock falls or the market, it just happens faster than action moves up. Okay. And if you don't know what I mean, if you've never traded before, we're going to look at a couple charts. And if you do know what I mean, you know what I mean. So anyways, this is me. If you have any questions, you can email me at Melissa, the stock swoosh.com or call me at 929-3200 gap. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So if you want to do this, it is possible, but you have to be focused. Now, if you want to trade for a living, you can do it from home. It's one of the benefits of trading. I I'm here, I'm in New York, but I could be anywhere in the world. And so if you've never thought about this, again, what is it going to take for you to do it? I mean, seriously thought, think, thought about it. If you've never seriously thought about it, if you kind of casually thought about it, which a lot of people have, you have to get set up. You have to have a trading account. I think you have to have a quiet place to, to work or trade in your, in your home or apartment. And I also think that you need to be very focused on a specific time of the day. Now, most of the trades that we're doing in the trading room are happening in the morning. You have to be available when? Between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. If that works for you, then my strategy is something that you can look into learning. If it does not, then you're not going to be able to do the active day trades with me. Now, that being said, you can use my strategy for options. Options trades can set up at any time during the day. But the day trading, the active equity trading that we do is in the morning, okay? This is the results for the day trading room for the month of November. I'm not going to go through all this here. They are on uh, a video that I posted on YouTube. But you can see very obvious here looking at the, each day for the month of November. And this is typical of my trading throughout the, throughout the months and years. Is that I'm really, really looking for what? One ticker symbol a day. So one ticker symbol a day is where my focus lies. So if I can find one pick one good trade, one good setup, one good stock. That's all that I need. And that's all that you need to do this. And again, it's not about the more you trade, the more money you make. That is, that is a, a, a fallacy that many, many traders think, well, if, I, if I'm having a good morning, I'm going to trade all day. No, many people give money back in the afternoon. And that is very dangerous. And I realized very early on not to trade not to trade all day. Okay. So if you make money in the morning, you should really stop. And again, if you have any questions, you can type it in the room. So there are different types of trades, all kinds of traders, but again, we're going to focus on day trading and you have to be available. Like I said, between 9 30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time into the open. And you've really got to set the proper expectations for yourself. If you're going to do this now, what do I mean? Well, if you want to earn 20 grand a month, that's all well and good, but you can't have a small, tiny little $500 account and do that. Now, it's not that you couldn't build that account up and grow it, but you have to set the proper expectations for yourself. Depends how much money you have, how much you can risk. And that's what you have to look at. And we will look at the risk of the trades as well here today. But before you even begin to risk any money in the market, you really have to have a strategy. And I keep repeating myself with this, but it's critical. And it's one of the most important things that I tell people. Um, I also think it's important to have a mentor if you don't fine, but if you do, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. And so I mentor my students 
in the live training room. I make myself available by phone and email for people too when they have questions about trades. If I had had a mentor, it would have been a lot, a lot more easier for me uh, when I had first started out. I began trading in 2008, and that was really uh, 10 years ago, but I really didn't have that assistance and it would have been helpful. So what do I do? I'm looking in the beginning period of the morning, between the first half an hour, maybe the first hour of the day. But that's really what I'm focusing on. And that is where most of the moves of the stocks that we're trading have the momentum, the volatility. Because again, as a trader, that's how you're gonna make the money. But you have to be realistic with your goals. Does that mean that you can't dream that you can achieve these huge goals if you can only afford to start out small? No, no. You could get there in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months. Nobody says you can't get there at some point even soon. But it's the idea of be realistic with yourself so you focus on the knowledge. We were talking about this in the live trading room this morning. The knowledge is critical. And specifically right now with the market, the way the market has been acting and the way the market's been trading and the way the market's going to be in 2019 as well. 2018, a lot of people thought the market was very volatile. It will, that this year will be nothing compared to what next year is going to be. Now, what do I mean? I mean that if you're positioned, positioned in the right way yourself individually as a trader for 2019, that you know what you're doing, you know how to trade, you know how to capture moves in stocks and volatility, you could potentially have a very good year next year trading, meaning that you'd make a lot of money. If you are not in the right position, meaning you don't have the right knowledge, you're gonna have a terrible year. And a lot of people had a hard time this year. This year is gonna look like a puppy dog compared to next year for what the market's gonna bring. Mark my words. And I actually only realized that yesterday. <clears throat> So my market call for 2019 is the market is going to be like a lion as far as volatility goes. This year it was like a lamb. Now to me, the market was not really volatile this year, even though people said it was and they said it was. It was up and down. But really, once we get past a certain point, the market just held the uptrend. But it was back and forth a lot for people. Today was a good example too. However, if you know how to read it, again, you can make money. And today was a good example too because I called an option trade in the market Friday into today and it went higher, okay? So you can dream to have these big goals, even if you have a small amount of money to start, but you have to be realistic about how long it's going to take you to get there. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You will learn along the way. Now, if you have the money to go out and risk to start to make this kind of cash right away with the right knowledge, you're going to be positioned well for 2019. Why? Again, because the market is going to be very volatile in the coming year. Way more than it's ever, ever been. So how can you do this? Where? Again, you can work from home. You could be in your office. Now, what do I do? I look at gaps. I'm just going to show you a couple of day charts here of a few gaps that happened in the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> and again, these are shorts. But what would you learn from me? You would learn how to get up in the morning and find what stock to trade. So this was CTRP. The stock gapped, closed the night before here, boom, gapped up in the gap down here in the morning. So the stock closed the night before around 34 something and opened down here around 30 something. Guess what? It gapped down. So what do I do in the morning? I find this, this CTRP or whatever I'm happy to look at and I rate it. I have a system where I'll rate it in the pre-market and I'll determine if it's a long or a short. In the case here of CTRP, it's a short, or it was a short, okay? Was a short that fell in the day, boom, dropped, boom, 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 fell down. This was back in the first week of November. So if you see here how if you had shorted the stock, you would have made money. Now, for those of you that don't even know what a short is, I'm just going to do a brief review. When you're shorting a stock, you're, you're, it's like you're betting that the price is lower. You're not buying it. You're shorting it. And you're borrowing you're saying i'm going to borrow this at 30 bucks and i'm going to short it and i'm going to give it back to you at 28 bucks because i think it's going lower so i'm going to short it and i'm going to make what two dollars so if you short a stock and it drops two dollars you short it at 30 and drops 28 and get out what's your profit with a thousand shares you would have made two grand does that make sense so that's what really shorting is and i know a lot of people don't understand that a lot of people you know, are trying to constantly go long because they're, that's their comfort level, especially with overnights. But in reference to trading specifically, you got to learn how to short because you will get stocks that move up and stocks that move down. And the reason I like shorts is because they move very fast. Here is another good one here, NVIDIA. 
stop close to your gap down. Again, this was on the 16th, two weeks ago. The stock closed up here the night before. You see the price, and then it opened here. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Tons of stuff gap all the time. The market gap today. A million things gap today. But how do you know which way to play it? How do you know to go long or short this? How do you know the direction? That's what you've learned from me. That's the strategy. That's the system. The system is the 26 points that you will learn in my class to determine if NVIDIA was a good long, is the stock going to move higher, or is the stock going to move lower? And I said, well, this rate's good, so the stock's going to move lower. And it did. So here's the move. Okay. Dropped off there. Took a day down. Dropped. This was, again, a nice short move. Okay. So you make money doing this. And you can make money doing this as day trades, and you can make money doing this as options, and you can make money how? You're playing the volatility in the stock that it, it, it's pushing down. It's selling off, okay? It dropped. Now here, this was a very, very good rated gap. If you want to come learn what I know in the class, you'd learn all of the points. I get the points off the daily chart. It's a 26-point system. So when something rates 24, that's really, really high. So NVIDIA rated 24 points, that's almost perfect. It is perfect, okay? That's a very high rated gap. What did that tell me? I'm going to go back. That told me, wow, this is going to drop like a brick. It's going to go, and it's going to have a big move, and it's going to be big. And that's what it did. So the higher the rated gap on my system on the scale, the better, bigger the move, the more it's going to have momentum, okay? And then, obviously, the prediction of it. So anyways, this was a day trade. And again, this was a couple weeks ago, but it was a good trade, so I'm going to go over it. If you were in the trading room with me, you shorted it here. 154.25, stop was above it, 156.76. So if it had hit over this number, which it didn't, this didn't stop. But if it had, you would have had a loss, okay? So we use stops, and I'll teach that in the class. But one of the important things is what? you got to put a stop. Because if you don't have a stop in, then you will have if you will have way too big of losses. So the reason I use stops is to keep the losses contained. Because not every trade that I do works. I mean, that's just a fact. A lot do, but not every one. I'd say out of every 10 trades, seven are going to work, three are going to lose. So what does it mean? you got to put a stop in. Now, this worked. 1,000 shares was the original position. Then I took more. Then it pulled my price down a little bit, but not that far away. Then I had 2,000, this was a great trade, got the drop, which is the sell-off, okay? Exit 148.70. So again, what is a short? I'm just gonna go back. You're betting that the stock price is gonna drop, boom, and you're looking for an entry here in whatever direction you're playing it, and you're getting the move, okay? Down here's the volume, and if we were live here, this would be the moving price. And again, I'm looking at this in the candlesticks. Got it? So this was a great trade. And really, 2,000 shares to be able to make over 10 grand is awesome. But it was the momentum. And it was the price that I got it. Okay? Price that I got it and momentum together, which all really makes sense and goes. Any questions here so far? All right, I'm going to keep talking. Anyways, how do I figure all this out? I go through a checklist process. So part of the thing about trading in the morning is when you get up in the morning, if you can look at what's happening in the market and stocks, in the pre-market, and kind of get prepped. Again, market opens at 9.30. You could start at 8 a.m. You could start at 8.30. I start before 8 a.m., but I don't like to be rushed. But just give yourself that prep time. A lot of day traders are rushed. They don't even know what stocks are trading or looking at until 9.30. A lot of them are scrambling and trade on the fly. And a lot of people wait late. They wait till after 10 to even take a trade. That's very late for me. So a lot of people have no idea what they're doing at all until half an hour, hour into the open. Whereas I know what I'm doing even before the market opens. So do you see the genius in that? It also helps you trade much more relaxed than if you were trading on the fly. It's never a good idea to trade on the fly, and yet many, many traders do that. So I'm going to go over this here, how much money do you need? Now, people ask me this all the time. When you're day trading, not doing options, just day trading, 
you have to have a, something called a margin account. Now you can have a retail margin account or you can have a prop margin account. There's something called proprietary day trading firms out there which you can look into or you can ask me for a referral if you want one. But they give you something called margin. Retail brokerage accounts give you something called margin too, but it's in a different margin than prop. So at most prop places, you need a minimum of 2,500 and they'll give you 10 to one in your money. Does that mean that if you have 25,000 in buying power, you could lose $25,000? No, you're only gonna have access to that money as a day trade for the period that you do in it. And if you put in a stop, all you'll ever lose is the difference between the entry and the stop. And I wanna make this clear because so many people don't understand this. If I'm in the trading room and I call this number here, and I'm just giving you the pennies. That could be any stock, could be 24.10, could be 24.50. But if I say 10 by 50, what is your stop? The stop equals, or I'm saying the risk, okay, is 40 cents. So 40 cents times, and I'm just gonna make it easy here, 1,000 shares equals 400 bucks. So if you took 1,000 shares in that example, your risk would be $400. But what if the stock price was, like I just said, 24.10? If it was 24.10 times 1,000, it would have cost what? 24,100 in buying power. But if the trade stops out, all you're gonna lose is 400, not 24,100. It is something called margin, leverage. And if you don't know what that means, you can look it up and Google it and read about it. But so many people don't understand when you're day trading, you are in and out and you're only risking the position size that you're taking, not the cost of it. And you don't need the cost of it in its entirety in a margin account. You, you, we, people don't trade on cash accounts. Now, when you're doing an option, I'll explain that when we get to that example later, you only pay the cost. But it is very accessible for regular people to trade and make a lot of money in the market with margin because you are day trading in and out. You don't need millions and millions of dollars to do it. Your risk is different. It depends on the difference between the entry and the stop. And every trade that I call is different. So I don't know what the amount is until the trade sets up. Sometimes the stops are small. Sometimes the stops are big. We don't know. But your expectation should be that if you risk $400, for example, you should be looking to make $400. So you're looking to turn around your risk per day to have a risk to reward per day of one minimum. Now, many, many trades will be more than that, like this one here. This was a bigger uh, risk to reward payout here than this, okay? So you will have ones that go way bigger than what your original risk is, but that's not every trade. So again, being realistic, you have to understand that. Now, before I keep talking here, does anyone have any questions about buying power or margin? Do, does everyone understand that? Does anyone have any questions about the difference between a retail account or a prop account? I mean, ask me now. This is something that I need to talk about more in webinars. I did not realize that people did not understand this. My assumption is that people do, but I know now after talking to some people recently that a lot of people do not understand this and it's very important. If you want to do this, you must understand that the only thing that you will lose in a trade is the amount of the share quantity size times your the the position size of where you put the stop. And you know, unless you don't put a stop in, but even still, you would you would get out whenever you hit out of it and it wouldn't be the cost of the position. There's a big big difference between what a position costs to take on margin and what you're actually risking in it, okay? And that is something that you must understand. And if you don't, you know, you can ask me here. Anyways, let's keep going here. So this was Friday's gap, SFM, a very, very nice gap, a very uh, uh, great move. Again, we're looking for the sell-off here, very, very important. Stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed to the night before around 27, open in the morning around 23, whatever. Then it fell, okay? So you have a stock close here, gap down, dropped. Again, I rated the gap in the morning. It rated 21 points per my system. I said, wow, this is gonna be a good one here. And then it worked. 
So if you shorted this, you got this move, okay? So it's very, very, very important when you're looking to get in trades, when you're looking to take them, that you have what? Momentum. You, you don't wanna have to sit for five and a half hours in this sucker. Actually, let me pull up the chart here. Let me just see. This, this didn't even, just hang on one second. This did not even take Hold on, can everybody see that? Can everybody see this? Hello, is anyone there? Okay, so we're talking about momentum. Look at the momentum that was in this stock initially. This is the first bar of the day, the first minute. So the first minute here is what? It's 9.30, okay? You have almost a buck in the, and, and, and I know this is flat, but we watched it and if you were in the room, I had an open house party, it was like, woo! I mean, to, for the stock to go, this is, I, this is flat right now, so it's so hard for you to get it. But if, you're, if you had watched this trade, it was like, whoa it moved huge and i mean huge and big in in a very fast time now that is what i'm talking about about volatility that's what i'm talking about about momentum that's what i mean so now we didn't get in it into the open here i called the trade here you took it if you wanted it some people got out here i ended up doing it here and I waited for the push down, and then we got it into the drop in here. And wherever you got out in here was good. But again, this is what? This is basically a buck. This is basically a buck. 80 cents, 90 cents, 75 cents, a buck. Wherever you get in, you get out. You get in, you get out. So I'm always, always, always looking for a sell-off if I'm shorting or a rally if, if I'm looking for something to go long. But again, in this case here, it's a, it's a, it's a short. But I want you to see, it's, you know, you can see this here. If I, I'm gonna go over here. You see, this is the daily. Here, let me get rid of today because it kind of screws you up if you look at it. This was Friday, and again, we shorted it, it worked. <laughs> but if you look at it, you say, woo. But when you look at that, you it didn't transpire it wasn't like it opened at 9.30 and went la, 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 and took all day to fall. No, day trading is exactly like this. And you would never know this. You see this here, you say, okay, fine. But this is what happened. Oops, I lost that. It, this all, that all happened here. That all happened in five minutes. And then it went back down there again, and that took like an hour, but still, here was the whole day. I'm gonna squish it. This is Friday. So all of that that you're seeing that you want to capture as a trader, look at when it happened in the morning, okay? And again, that's all you have to do. All you have to do is capture that amazing period. Oh, that's today. So this is, you. if you can't tell that looking at the daily, but see here, now you can tell it with the one minute. I mean, you would never know. Let me get that back over here. Let me see if I can get that back here. You would never know looking at this when that happened. But this is what happens nine times out of ten. You get that move and a bar that goes like that from the morning. And that's what's so great about this. That's what's so, and how can you do that? You gotta know what to watch. You gotta know what to watch right into the open. Because guess what? Otherwise you miss it. You miss it. So I am all ready to go to see and know that this is the one to watch. Now I I'm not getting in it before the open, but I know to watch it because this very thing here happens all the time. Oops, where you get the move that happens like that quick. So if you're looking to get in later, you're waiting till after 10 o'clock or you're waiting all day or whatever it is, or you don't know what to watch and you're scanning and you have no clue what to do and you don't know which one's a good, you miss it. You miss the good entry, you miss the volatility, you miss the move, okay? 
And it's very important as a trader. And again, as I was saying earlier about the market and for 2019, you are gonna you are gonna not know what to do very often if you don't have the right knowledge of what to be focused on in 2019 because many, many stocks will go with the market. Today was a good example too. A lot of things gapped up with the market today, but didn't mean there were longs. And it doesn't mean you short them either, but a lot of things gapped up today with the market. A lot of stocks move with the market, but the market's very hard to read. And if you don't know how to you know, read the market well, you're not going to do well trading if you need the market. So I look for selective things, okay? And this would have been a selective thing. Let me go back to the PowerPoint. Any questions so far? <coughs> Any questions at all? Anyways, how do I do it? I have a rating system that allows me to go through it. This is what you learn. This is the knowledge. This is the piece of information that's worth the money that you're paying me for that took me three years plus to figure out. It's all the points. I go through it. Boom, 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 boom. And that's what tells me SFM is a good one. NVIDIA is a good one. NTAP's a good one. The market is a good one or whatever. Whatever it happened to be looking at that's gapping because tons and tons and tons of things gap every morning, but you don't know what to do unless you actually know how to qualify it. Okay. So I was touching on this before, but what kind of trading account do you need and how much money do you need to do it? You can open up a prop account with $2,500. Although there's places out there you can open it up less to day trade, I would not suggest doing that. 2500 is a good starter account. You'll get 10 to 1 leverage, which is 25000 That's a good start. I think if you have 5000 be even better because you could have 50000 in buying power. And many of the stocks we trade, not all of them are expensive like, like NVIDIA, but many of the ones that we do are between the price points of, I'd say, 10 bucks, 20 bucks and up around the $40 range. And you get really big moves in stocks like that. SFM is a great example. Big move, and that stock was not expensive, okay? If you wanna to go to a retail place, you need 25,000 per the retail guidelines. They will also not give you 10 to one leverage, you'll get four to one. So you will have 100,000 in buying power, 25 grand at a place like, for example, an E-Trade. And if you had 25,000 at a prop place, you'd have 10 to one, so you'd have 250 grand in buying power. How does that help you? What's the benefit? The benefit really is that if you do get a pricey stock like NVIDIA, or even if you wanna trade the SPY, that you'll be able to take a larger position. So that's the benefit of that, okay? And here I talk about it here. But when you, when you day trade, you trade with a margin. I mean, you know, if you have an account set up somewhere as a cash account, you probably don't have it set up uh, to do active day trading. You probably have it set up to do more, uh, options um, or, or just swing trades. But day trading, this in and out, boom, 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 like SFM, it's done with margin and the NVIDIA trade too. If you don't know what that is, contact your broker to find out. We're in and out, in and out, between 9.30 and 4, and we're really never in anything at 4, but I'm just using that as an example where you would take the trade and you must exit the trade before 4. The Golden Gap system, which is my system, can be traded though with any size day trading account. Your risk has to be appropriate for the amount of size account of the cash that you have in the account, as well as the margin, okay? But the most important thing is to learn, learn the system first, because that's how you get the conviction to do it, and then you build up from there. And you, can, you don't have to open up an account before you learn my system or do the class. You can follow, trade on a demo, set up charts, play around with it, learn it, start rating the gaps, and then go live after the class. It takes about a day or two to open up an account. But I don't do anything with penny stocks. I think they're a total waste. I don't even look at them or do anything with them or the cheapy ones in the room. I think they're just garbage. What we're looking for, what we're trading are stocks that you'll typically know the names of the companies. You will recognize them and they have volume and they move, okay? All the stocks reviewed in the system have volume and are actively traded and the price range varies, but most stocks are in the mid price range. Again, it's not that we'll never do anything at that $100 price point, but we don't do them like that every day or every week. It's very important, I think, to have a mentor. If you've been at that point in your life where you've been back and forth, back and forth with a lot of different strategies, not finding success, losing money in the market, or taking multiple classes and not finding the right thing, it's important to have a good mentor. Someone you can talk to, someone you can pick up the phone and call, someone you can email, someone you can follow in the trading room. I call the trades live, you just take them. If you're in the room and you join. If you're on your own and out there, it's a, it's a longer road. It's a road you probably will never you know, find success on. It is a difficult road, 
I'm glad that I figured out the things I did, but I was a very determined person. So I have an unusual personality where I'm highly determined in a, in a, in a unique way. So I was able to create my own system. But I think most people would struggle with that because it was tough for me. And you have to be a very strong, strong person. You also have to have a lot of money. Because when I was figuring out my system, I was trading real money, not on a demo. It's much, much different when you're doing it live than on a demo. When you are trading live with real money and you're creating a system, you really feel the, the struggles with that and the highs and lows when you're doing it. Now, I don't have a problem with people being on a demo at the beginning, like the first week or two, but people got to get off demos if they want to do it. And obviously, you have to get the feel for it, for trading, for pressing the buttons, for doing it. And you want to see the benefit and you want to see the money. I mean, everyone is doing this because you want to profit and make money. And I think, again, going back to what I was stating at the beginning of the webinar earlier, if you want to do it for a living, you definitely have to be serious. If you don't want to do it for a living, you just want to do it on the side as something fun, well, that's okay. But you still should know what you're doing and take it serious enough to do it even if it's just for fun on the side part-time because you still can lose your own real solid money. And so you got to take it seriously. And if you don't take it seriously, then you will probably lose. Okay? And most people do lose because they don't take it seriously. Any questions? So I definitely think that getting an education first before trading is just common sense to me. I did do one class when I started out. Now, I didn't learn how to make money in that class, but I learned a basic foundation which allowed me to create my own system. But I didn't learn how to make money. And what I teach people is actually how to make money in the market. That SFM is a great example. My call today in the market, we're going to go over too, is a great example as well. So I like to make money. I'm sure that you do too. That's important. So if you're losing in the market, you should stop what you're doing because making money is critical. Any questions here? Okay, I think you put my email in the room too. But what makes some people successful and some people fail? Well... Again, getting back to knowing and having the knowledge, it's also the conviction, all right? It's, it's you got to have the clarity. you got to have the focus. A lot of people second-guess themselves. I don't know if I should do it. I should not do it. Should I take it? Should I take it? I teach people conviction, but the conviction comes from the knowledge. The conviction I have when I make a call or even say something on national TV is because I'm saying I know this and I believe in this, therefore this, okay? The conviction comes from the knowledge because without that, you won't be successful. And when I state something that I'm certain of, I say so, or what it needs to do for that fact. When I say that, I, that I'm not saying that or I'm not committing to that, that's a different story. I was on TV two weeks ago or maybe it was three weeks ago now. I don't know. The days are running together. But someone was saying about the market making new highs for the end of the year. I said, I don't have 100% conviction that it's going to happen. I said, I don't have 100% conviction at all. Now, last night we gapped up in the market. We opened higher today. And I still said in the morning. And we could have held. I, we had to hold 280 in the first five minutes of the day to run up in the market today. And we didn't do it. But even still, I said, we still might make a new high before the end of the year. I'm not sure. But I did say... I don't have 100% conviction. What does it tell me? It means you probably will not. And the fact that we fell off today after Big Gap Up, and it's December 4th tomorrow, closed Wednesday because of the Bush funeral. The market is closed in the middle of the week, which is odd. We don't have that many more days left between now and the end of the year, so the likelihood of us making new highs is slim, although we still could. We could. So it's a difference between knowing and saying, well, maybe. So knowledge is what it's about because, again, going back to the knowledge, it's the key. It's the key to conviction. And when you're risking money, when you're taking 1,000 shares or 2,000 shares or 3,000 shares or 5,000 shares, you do want to have conviction, okay? You're not going to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in a trade or in a week or in a month or in a year if you don't have conviction. I, you know, I don't care what size account you have. Conviction allows you to take the risk and be successful and feel relaxed in your choices instead of being stressed. So a lot of people are stressed from their trade because they don't know what they're doing. So the knowledge gives you the conviction, which means that you can be less stressed because you're saying, well, I know this is probably going to work because doot ba doot ba do And then you know it because of the reasons, because of the rating system. That's how I am anyways, and this is what I teach people to do. So you come and you learn from me because you're trying to learn what I know so you can be like me. That's what a mentor is.
trade like me, be like me, think like me, rate the gap, see the charts. Anyways, you don't want to be stressed out. It's bad, bad for your trading. And even though we're in and out of these trades very quickly, it's actually not stressful because of the fact that I'm putting in a stop. And so it either works or it doesn't. I've determined way, way ahead of the primo market that I like it or I don't. So therefore, I'm not stressed. I say, well, this is a good one. And I like it. And I, I rated it. I looked at it. I analyzed it. I studied it. I figured out the points. So it wasn't like I, boom, you know, just did it in a second without thinking about it. I, th I might have thought about it since 7 a.m. before I took it. Um, Nikki, I did cover that. You did come in late, but I did, I did cover that. I can flip back to that slide here. Trading with a margin account. If you trade at a retail account, you will need 25,000. If you go to a proprietary day trading account, you have to at least put up what they require. Most places require a minimum of $2,500. You can open up accounts with less than that, but I would not advise it. So if you do not have 25,000, then you need to go to a proprietary day trading firm. It is accessible for you to day trade without 25 grand. There's thousands and millions of traders that do not have $25,000 and they are actively trading the market in something called proprietary day trading accounts. And if you never heard of it before and you don't know what it is and look it up, you can email me more about it later, but all you have to do is Google it. There's a ton of places. I would advise you to look into the places that you're going or you could ask me for a referral. But there's tons of people trading that don't have 25,000. <laughs> Got it? And you can also do options. We didn't get to that part. You didn't miss that, but we will talk about options. Options, you do not need a margin account. The active day trades in and out, you do, but you can open up a prop account. Okay, does that answer your question? <laughs> And, and again, if you need a referral, you can ask me. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, the nice thing about day trading is no overnight risk. You're out. You got to be flat before the close. You're in control of your money because you can get in, you can get out, you can put the stop in, you could kill it. Okay. You can press the button yourself. No one else is doing it. You are there on your keyboard doing it. <laughs> unless you lose internet for some reason you and then if you would you would always call your broker and say take me out of this you know if that would happen but the idea is that you're in control you're in control okay and one of the things I like about day training is again you don't have to worry about the overnights although it can sometimes work in your favor if you're in an overnight option but the returns can be incredible because of the fact that you're in and out and you're getting these moves so quick so if you look at it like a percentage of return to an investment, it's, it would be, it's, I don't use that as a qualification to compare because again, it would be several hundred percent in some of these trades. So you say, well that, you know, I don't, I look at it like risk to reward. If I'm risking a thousand, I'm looking to make a thousand. If I'm risking 2000, I'm looking to make 2000. If you're risking 500, you're looking to make 500. That's what you should do. That's how you really need to look at it and think of it. But day trading is not investing. And I think that's where some people get confused as well. It's you're producing income, you're chunking it out. You're chunking it, chunking it, chunking it. And the idea of making 200 grand a year, 400 grand a year seems like a lot of money, but really, and people that do investing, I'm talking about buy and hold, you know, are making millions that are doing it correctly. So the idea of making a couple hundred thousand, again, is, 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 is just chunking out a percentage or an amount because people that buy a stock at you know say 20 bucks and hold it for 20 years and the stock runs up to be worth 500 bucks a share can make millions of dollars but that's that's investing and you can't get out of that ever until it goes where you want you want to get out of it because once you're out of it you're out of it so this is different you're in you're out you're in you're out boom to do and the reason, again, you're looking for the momentum is so that you can get in and out. You want to get in and out. This is not investing. If you have an investor mentality, if you don't understand margin, if you don't understand what a prop account is, you got to get your head wrapped around it. If you're thinking, oh, I need all this money to do it. This is going to be crazy. No, 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 no. Part of the reason you have the volatility in the market and part of the reason you have all the big moves and part of the reason for all of it is why? 
guess what? Because you do have a lot of people that are trading in the market, a lots and lots and lots of traders, and they all don't have hundreds and thousands of dollars or even 25 grand, okay? The market is available for many people to participate, anyone that can trade it. But you still need to know what you're doing. And it's getting back to what I was saying, what is it? Uh, chunking it out means breaking it down in your head. I mean, if you, if you can get your head around this, then it seems more feasible. Sometimes we have a really good trade. I say, well, we don't need to do anything else the rest of the week. Not that we won't. Not that I won't get up and look at something the next day, but it's the idea. I say, oh, whew, we have our goal for in for the week. If you're looking to make 20 grand a month, it comes out to be five grand a week. We've made that in one trade, too. If your goal is to do this for a living, okay, you have to look at it like, okay, I have a goal today, but what if we don't do any trades today? All right, well, then we look tomorrow, and I have a goal for tomorrow. It's, it's a weekly goal. It's a monthly goal, and that's how you get to the annual goal. Sometimes people take a loss, and I have some losing days. So when you take a loss, you can't say, oh my God, this is insane. Tomorrow I'm gonna have to risk the farm. No, 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 no. You look at it like this is a whole thing. This is the week, this is the month, this is the year. You can't just lose it if one day you don't get a good trade. And again, going back to what many people do, many people don't think like that. So then they go crazy and they spiral out of control in one day. And then it does take them a whole month to come back. But chances are they don't because then they get nuts in their head. One losing day isn't going to kill you. Now, that being said, you shouldn't have really more than two or three losing days a month if that, which I don't even think we had at all in November or October. I've been trading so well this year. But you have to expect, and that's why I use stops, that you will have three out of every ten trades fail and seven work. But there are some times when I'm on a roll, and I do seem to be on a roll right now. <laughs> Any other questions? You look at it like you're risking the money and we're usually trying to get a move. Could be 50 cents, could be 25 cents, could be a buck. I'm trying to get a buck. I'm trying to get a buck in most things we do and I think that's reasonable over the size of the stocks that we're taking in the cost positions. Now let's talk about options a little bit. Someone was asking about this earlier. If you wanna do options, fine. You don't have to be in the trading room for this. I call it a good option trade very late and I'm gonna explain why briefly here. I know we're running short of time but I'm gonna explain what I did here in this. This was the market. so so late into the close literally and I'll show you the chart in a minute I called the market long so it was a good trade I so I called the 280 spy calls expiring out this Friday literally into the close Friday night in the market when you're doing an option you can trade the market and you can enter the market after the close so you could have bought this actually after the close boop, and it gapped up so this was a good call so that this is an example of an option and I'll show you the trade in a minute here in the letter, but this is in the letter you would get it. An option, it's whatever it costs. If it costs a dollar, that's what you're paying. If it costs $2, that's what you're paying. So this is nothing to do with margin, okay? And if you don't know about options, you know, that's a longer discussion. But here was the gap. So I'm gonna show it to you. This was Friday, and then two, we gapped up here this morning. This was 4 a.m. So this was into the night time here, you can see, time of the day into late, 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 Friday night, and then boop, 4 a.m., market opened up. So this is a pre-market, post-market, and pre-market trading action of the market, and this is a gap. So you can see gaps on any chart, a one minute, two minute, 15 minute, daily, whatever, but I'm showing you here a one minute, and this was Friday night, and this was this morning. So here's where I made the call very late here into the day on Friday, but this was the market. The market started to get buying coming into it here around 135. Then it had the follow through, then it rallied, 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 and I called the trade late. There was buying that came in, lifted it, and that's how you had this move. And that's how you had this move here. So here was the trade. I, I literally call this a 355, but you can buy market puts or options or calls 10 minutes after the, op after the close. In the queues in the spy in the market ETFs, it's not with stocks. You can't do that with stocks, but you can do it with the market. So you could have bought the, you had 15 minutes to do this trade. Buy the spy call strike 280, expiring this Friday, and get out of it today. Now, this one here today would have been a good trade today if it had held 280, but it didn't do it. It didn't do it. It didn't do it, and we closed that into where we closed exactly, but we didn't hold 280. So it was just a once, one over. Now, for people that are still in this, Yes, we could move higher, but the problem is Wednesday the markets close because that kind of screws up the week. 
So I think it was best for people to get out of this today. Anyways, that was a nice trade. It was a nice call. So here's how it worked out. Cost of the contract, if you were a beginner, was what? $1.60. You could have bought two. It's 200 shares equivalent. Risk was 320 bucks. Sold it today, 290. Profit, boom, 260. Return on investment is 81%. So this has nothing to do with buying power. You pay $1.60. You could have bought as many as you wanted. And then you get out of it today. If you're an advanced trader, you could have paid what? Again, same price, $1.60. Contracts, 20 is 2,000 shares. Risk is 3,200. Sold it. Profit, 2,600 bucks. Return on investment at 81%. It's just one trade. You bought it Friday, sold it today, boom, boom. This is an option, but the philosophy, and I'm gonna go back to the chart here, is the same concept. Now, in this case here, this was a long, so it was bullish, and the SFM was bearish. Still same concept, what? The gap. But in this case here, I predicted the market would gap up. That was a pretty good call. Okay. This is the options newsletter. You can subscribe to the newsletter separately. In order to be in the live trading room, you must do my class. The newsletter is for a year. This was uh, uh, actually, this guy is on the letter. Um, he has not done the Golden Gap class yet. He's just on the newsletter, but he's realizing that my market calls are pretty awesome. So that was a nice little email I got from him over the weekend. Um, but you'll learn this. You'll learn what I know and only in the class. But you can just do the options trades if you want. You don't have to worry about margin. But don't think you need 25000 a day trade because you can open up a prop account, Nikki. And Nikki, you've been following me for 150 years. <laughs> so I'm a little surprised that you're asking this now. That's a question you should have asked a long, long time ago. If you're sitting on the sidelines and not trading because you thought that, you should have asked me that question six years ago. All right, let's talk about one strategy and no margin account required is the benefits of options. So I'm just going over the difference here. If you want to do options, you can. But I think personally, both is good. Same strategy, same system. One way to do it is an option. One way to do it is an equity trade. So as an option, you don't have margin requirements. No day trading margin requirements. Only the cost is the price you pay. It doesn't matter if it's a stock that's $200 a, a share or 20 bucks. And you still can make active good money trading just like equity trades, but I don't call options trades every day. I call them when I see them, whenever that is. Like getting, you know, you know, it's, no, I did call one today. I actually did call one today. I was just gonna say, but I didn't, I did. I called one this afternoon, but I don't know if I will tomorrow. Anyways, you can make a good return on investment and that's important. Any questions here? I actually feel like I've been calling a lot of options trades lately. Um, I just heard a little noise. Is everybody hearing me with hot com? That sounds like a hot com bleep. Am I still live here, Kathy? I just heard a little dingy. Is that my computer or hot com? All right, must have been my computer. Anyways, options are a way to make money if you cannot be in the live trading room daily. So if you're interested in more information, you certainly can email me. I think learning it is important for many many reasons because if you learn it you're going to trade better whether you do the options or the day trades but it's still the idea that you're in and you're out you're making the money even the options trades you're not holding them for weeks or months you still can make good money doing both the benefits of day trading though which is getting back to what we're talking about you work your own hours okay take a vacation when you want and have unlimited income potential the benefits are, 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 are a lot, but it's like, what are you going to have to do to get there? The cost of my class, opening up an account and going through a learning curve. So that's the, that's the side benefit of having a mentor. You, I help you through the learning curve because you will have a learning curve. Most people do have a learning curve and you just have to know that that's okay. Most people do. There's nothing wrong with that. Learning should be fun. I don't know what happens after a certain point in life, but a lot of people stop wanting to learn. You can never stop wanting to learn. You have to want to learn to do this. You're going to have to learn it. It's not like you just plug in your computer and go do it and it's going to take the trades for you and do all the analyzing and everything else. This isn't a black box or computer program. You will have to use your mind and you will have to be in the class and the class is two long days. You will have to learn it and you have to do it. But guess what? That should be fun. That should be exciting. If you like the market, if you like trading and if you want to make money like this, then it is exciting because the money you make is exciting once you learn it. So you have to be willing to put in the time. You have to be willing to put in the energy and the work. Okay. 
Anyways, the nice thing about day training is again, in and out between 9, 30, and 10. And in my class and my system, you would learn what? You would learn the 26 point rating system. It measures gaps by rating them on the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, a big move in the day, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9 30 and 10 a.m., and precise entries with follow through, and a good risk to reward target potential. Okay. So, any questions as we're going along here from anyone at all? Any questions about gaps? Any questions about the market? Um, I have no idea where we gap tomorrow morning in the market. We can look at the market tonight and see where it's at. Uh, but I do think, as I said earlier, 2019 is going to have a lot of volatility. But the money really comes easy once you know what to do. Like all you had to do was do that trade on Friday night and you were up this morning when you rolled out of bed. I mean, it was like it didn't take any brain powder. But, you know, you've got to get to that point where you learn it. And then obviously to take the trade. And this is going back to the knowledge and then the conviction. Okay, so the conviction helps. And how do you get it from the knowledge? But really, ultimately, how much you make is a function of how much you risk. And so if you can risk $200 a trade, risk it. If you can risk $2,000 a trade, do it. It has to do with how much you understand the system and the amount of money that you have. The Golden Gap system is my class. It's I teach it in a two-day course. The class is December 15th and 16th. This is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system, and the purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. That's invaluable. Why? because that's how you're gonna make money. You will not make money if you are short something that's rallying and you will not make money going long something that's falling off the planet. You have to be in the right directional bias. It's critical. And I'm very focused, I only do gaps. That's it. You only need one thing. Get good at that one thing. So you learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps in my class and you don't need to do anything else. You literally don't. In fact, we were having a long, lengthy discussion today in the trading room about gaps because of the call that I made in the market. If you are as focused as I am on one thing, you will do well. When you're all over the place like crazy, it's going to be hard for you to just grab on something or ever have conviction in anything. The nice thing, again, about trading is you can do it from home. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. Again, it's the 15th and 16th, 9 to 5. It's Saturday and Sunday, which it usually is in a weekend. This is the December class, last class of the year. $59.99 is the price of the class. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And if you want to do the trends course, this is in January. You save $500 by signing up for both of them together. Two classes for one great price. And I'm doing an early bird offer through this weekend, Saturday, December 8th. You get the trading room and the options letter free for the next three months through Feb end of February. So it'll be the first quarter earnings season. It'll be December, January, February. That's three months of the options letter and the room. You get my calls and the support, and then you would be able to decide if you wanted to stay in the room or stay in the letter at that point. But that's a, a three-month period of being in the room that would really help benefit you to get going and to make money and trade. And it's just been a good year. So I think the people that are doing the best that are trading with me in the room are the people that listen to everything I say. Some people do and some people don't. Sometimes people get in in the morning when they, do, they want to do five different things. Actually, today we didn't do any trades. I did review the market option, but that was a trade from Friday, really. And with an exit today, we didn't do any new trades today in the trading room, in the equity room, live in the morning. There wasn't anything good to short. Now, part of it was the market gapped up, and there really wasn't any good shorts. But I'm certain that there were people in the room that traded, and they shouldn't have. So the best thing you can do for yourself, if you want to be successful, and you want to come and learn from me, you say, I think this girl knows what she's talking about, and I'm going to listen to her and follow. I have some people that recently did the class, and they are doing fantastic. And guess what? They're listening to me. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's critical when you decide and you're broaching something new and you're saying, I'm going to do this brand new thing. I'm going to listen to this person. I'm going to believe that they know what they're talking about. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to move forward. A lot of people, and I'm going to pull up the market chart here. A lot of people. <coughs> oh, here I got booted. Let me see if I can sign back in. Uh, hang on one second. That was my chart. A lot of people, um, what was I just going to say? A lot of people are doing things they shouldn't be doing.